Spacer time! Hey guys, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about this, carb spacers. Carb spacers on single planes. Carb spacers on dual planes. Carb spacers that work and some carb spacers that might work. Of course, I'm talking about the Super Richie Mega Ram. Does it even work? Let's find out. Okay guys, let's get started on our spacer comparison. We're starting off with our 5.3 liter equipped with a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam. And we're gonna start off with the dual plane and we ran the dual plane with no spacers. We also ran a Holly 750 XP carburetor and long tube headers on this combination. And equipped with no spacer, just the dual plane intake manifold as shown, 427 horsepower at the peak and it's got a nice torque bulge over here, 406 foot-pounds of torque. But here's what happened when we solved our Wilson open spacer. One inch. Here is the open spacer. And the open spacer definitely had an effect on the power curve, as you can see. You can see kind of a sine wave thing going on here. And we've seen this happen before on this particular dual plane. And you can see it made a little bit less peak power with the open spacer than it did just with the dual plane. But it made pretty good gains in the middle part of the curve, up to 5,800 RPM from 45 and then dropped down a little bit of power compared to no spacer at all from oh, about 32 or 3300 out to 42 or 4300. So you can see we had kind of a sine wave thing going on here. It made a little bit more power in the middle and kind of less at the bottom of the top with the dual plane intake manifold and an open spacer. I think probably a better combination for that particular dual plane might be either the four hole tapered combo or the four hole, just four hole all the way through for the dual plane. That'd be interesting to test. Unfortunately, we did not get to test that for this run, but let's take a look and see what happened when we ran spacers on our single plane. Okay guys, we got our single plane on. Go make a pull. So now let's take a look at the effect of 
carb spacers on our single plan carbureted combination. Again, all we did was change the carburetor on this. And for those that are interested, I may as well show you the difference between the single plane and the dual plane. Both of these are without spacers. So you can see the single plane definitely made more power, the Holley single plane versus the dual plane. The Holley single plane made more power, 443 versus 427. And it did lose torque down low, down below 4,500 RPM. The dual plane was a little better. And this is kind of typical of the single plane, dual plane thing, but we'll go ahead and get rid of that and show what happens when we change our spacers. This is the single plane intake manifold with the 750 Holley and no spacer. Here's what happened when we put a one inch open spacer on it. It actually picked up a little bit of power, mostly out here at the top. And this is not surprising. We don't see usually a big change in power when we add an open spacer to a an, what is already an open common plenum on the single plane. So we did pick up a little bit of power, went from 443 horsepower to 447. And as we went out in RPM, the single biggest gain, we went from 437.7 horsepower up to 443. So decent gains out there. The rest of it was kind of back and forth, one or two horsepower. Um, the, the, the open spacer seemed to gain a little bit. But here's what happened after we removed the open spacer, the one inch open spacer, and installed a one inch tapered combo. And the tapered combo, I'll show you a photo here, basically four holes kind of on the top where it mates to the carburetor and then it tapers toward an open at the bottom of the spacer. These are interesting, we've run these many times. And here's what happened when we installed our four hole tapered combo spacer. Really not a big change between the four hole tapered combo and the open spacer. And again, not too surprising on the you know open single plane intake manifold. We did see a little bit of a change maybe down low, but again, not much. There wasn't a lot to choose from between the four hole uh, tapered combo and the open spacer. I think we might've seen maybe spacer time. If we would have gone direct to a straight four hole spacer, um, that would kind of be my choice on the dual plane. And maybe I would have liked to have tried that on the single plane as well, but not a big change from spacers on the single plane. We saw much more of a change in the power curve on the dual plane. Let's get to our conclusion. And now for something completely outrageous. <laughs> this carb spacer. Let's see if it works. Should be kind of sealed. Actually, I jumped the gun wanting to get to the conclusion already because we have not looked at our Super Richie Mega Spacer. And let's face it, that's why we're all here. So this is our combination with the single plane intake manifold and no spacer. And here's what happened when we installed the Super Richie Mega Spacer. Basically, four inch tubing, and I'll have to go ahead and uh, measure it. And I'll go ahead and put it in the video and tell you exactly how long that is if for the mathematicians out there that want to figure out exactly how much volume that is because we are changing the plenum, plenum volume dramatically by adding that kind of spacer. But here's what happened when we added the mega spacer. We actually made similar peak power to no spacer at all. It was down a little bit. And actually, I think if I did more runs because we only made one run or two runs with the mega spacer, I think this would have come in a little bit more. I actually think that the mega spacer would have made very similar power to uh, either no spacer or maybe uh, we would have lost a little bit on the top compared to having an open spacer. I'll go ahead and show you that. 
because it took a few runs to get this thing to be perfectly repeatable and I just don't think that we were there yet with the with the mega spacer but regardless it's not something that you could run on the street anyway so here's our single plane with the open spacer which did a little bit better on the big end so the mega spacer <laughs> not quite as good as either not having a spacer at all or even having a, an open spacer like the Wilson piece because obviously they know a thing or two about actually making spacers Maybe I could have trimmed this a little bit again with a few more runs, but like I said, it's not something you're gonna put on the car unless maybe you have a rat rod or something and wanna stick the carburetor way up in the hood, put an air scoop on the hood, and then maybe you can get where the clouds and the birds are up there. Now let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway from the Super Richie Mega Spacer? Was it a success? I'm saying definitely yes. Especially if you compare it to my last video where I ran a divider on a single plane intake manifold that worked terrible. So compared to that, this gigantic success. But let's face it, tip-in would definitely be a problem on the street. Now let's talk about real spacers. The Wilson spacers that we tested on the single plane and the dual plane, and they worked very well. It definitely had an effect on the power curve. So as a tuning secret, spacers Definitely yes, and in my opinion, they tend to have more of an effect on a dual plane than they do on a single plane, but as always, your results may vary. I'm Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More craziness like the Super Richie Mega Spacer coming up.